structures we always you know like deal with the fundamental natural period period of the building or bridges or any structure that we are making so every building has number of natural frequency at which it offers minimum resistance to the shaking each of these natural frequencies and associated deformation shape of the building constitute a natural mode of oscillation each of these mode of oscillation with the smallest natural frequency and largest time period is called the fundamental mode so after that if we come along what is the fundamental natural period of the building the regular buildings held at their base from translational in the three directions will have three fundamental translational natural periods obviously there are three axes that we consider for the design of structures so there will obviously be three fundamental translational natural periods that is horizontal translational oscillation along x along y and along z there is also one fundamental rotational natural period also that is associated with about an axis parallel to z axis now we'll study about the diff 10 different buildings for different time period and different frequencies in this study the building a is basically two story building number of stories is 2 Number of bases four by three and column dimension is four hundred by four hundred. Building B is benchmark five story building with number of stories five and number of bases in four and y direction three and column dimension four hundred by four hundred. C is fundament basically a benchmark building with rectangular columns oriented along x direction. That is as you can see that the size of the column is five fifty by three hundred. So rectangular columns are oriented along the x direction. In third, in the fourth case, same building, five story, the size of the column three to five fifty, and the columns are oriented along the y direction. If I say that columns are oriented along y direction, it means that five fifty mm is parallel to the y axis. Fifth building is ten story building, with varying column size along the building height. So that is a practical case. Upper five stories are the four hundred by four hundred, and bottom five stories are six hundred by six hundred mm. As you know, like the earthquake forces are maximum on the bottom. Actual forces due to dead load and light load are maximum on the bottom. So, what basically structural engineering do is do is that it uh, he or she increases the size of the columns in the lower stories and decreases the size of the columns in the upper stories. Sixth case, ten story building, all the columns are of same size. That is six hundred by six hundred. And seventh case is twenty five story building. That is a high rise building with varying column size along building height. Upper five story is four hundred by four hundred. Middle ten stories are six hundred by six hundred, and bottom ten stories are eight hundred by eight hundred mm size. Eighth example is twenty five story building with all the same columns. Ninth case is twenty five story building with imposed mass ten percent larger than this upper case. That is the building that we are considering the H, and K is basically same building with twenty percent larger mass than building H. So, if we are considering the stiffness case study. So this is a very important parameter. If you know, like, if you can write these all these for a future reference, it will be better. Yeah, uh, it is suggested to write these all these criteria on your notebook and then compare with the these diagrams. So under building E, F, G, and H, time period is basically along X is one point three two. E building is this building. Here you can see that the column sizes are higher on the bottom and lower on the top. In case of F, all the columns are of same size. That is, all the columns are of 600 by 600 mm. In the case of G, it is a 25 story building with varying column sizes, and in the case of H, all the columns are of same size. So now here we are considering the stiffness case study. So under building E, you can see that the time period is somewhat higher. And in the case of building F, time period is somewhat lower. Why it happens is that time period is inversely proportional to the K. That is, time period is inversely proportional to the stiffness of the building. So if we are increasing the stiffness, time period is decreasing. So here. What happens is that in the case of building F, by providing the continuous column sizes, stiffness increases. So, if stiffness increases, time period decreases. And in the case of E, we are allowing sufficient translational deflection. So, what happens here is that stiffness decreases, so time period increases.
same happens here with significant amount of difference here all the difference is only 0.01 second but in the case of 25 story building you can see the major difference in the case of building h the time period is somewhat high whereas in the case of building g time period is somewhat low here you can see that these things these for this relationship and this relationship are contradicting with each other why here you can see that basically what happens is that time period is not only proportional to the stiffness of the building time period is also proportional to the mass of the building so in some cases it might happen that mass increases much larger as compared to the stiffness so time period is also proportional to the mass of the building so in this case what basically happening is that the mass of this is higher as compared to this all the stiffness is also higher as compared to this but the relationship between the mass is much higher as compared to this to again explain this concept increasing the column size increases both stiffness and mass of the building but when percentage increase in stiffness as a result of increasing column size is larger than the percentage increase in mass the natural period reduces this is the most important line and this is what happening in the case of building e and f here you can see that the building f is relatively stiffer as compared to building e so fundamental period of stiffer building is only marginally smaller than that of the building e but building and in the building between g and h mass plays an important role so if uh, in that case in the case of building h mass increases so the time period also increases so now this slide considers the mass behavior on the time period so here you can see that these the all these three buildings are 25 story buildings this building is 25% 10% more mass and this building has 20% more mass than this building so here you can see that the time period drastically increases so wherever in this case it is only 2.98 second and in this case it increased to 3.25 seconds just because the mass of the building was higher for building k as compared to building h so seismic mass of the building is the mass of the building that is effective in lateral oscillation during earthquake shaking it is sum of all the seismic masses at different flow levels and seismic mass at each flow level is equal to full dead load plus appropriate fraction of the live load basically what happens is that in earth you know like earthquake codes do allow some reduction in the live loads in some case it is only 25% of the weight of the total live load and in some case it is only 50% of the effective live load so most of the time it do happens that the effective mass that in like a participate in the lateral oscillation of building is dead load plus 0.25 times the live load or 0.5 times the live load now we can consider the effect of the building height so as the building height increases the fundamental natural period increases here you can see that in the case of building a the natural period is very low while in the case of building h the natural period is very high so as the height of the building its mass increases but its overall stiffness may decrease so the natural period of the building increases with increase in the height now we will study about the this column orientation on the time period how column orientation is affecting the time period so natural period of the building along the longer direction of the column cross section is smaller than that along the shorter direction so here you can see that in the case of building b the columns are square but in this case 300 by 550 and 300 by 550 in this case the columns are oriented along x and in this case the column is oriented along the y so here you can see that when the column is oriented along the x axis the time period is somewhat smaller similarly in this case we can see that the time period along x is somewhat higher and time period along y is somewhat lower after that what is the effect of unreinforced masonry in fields so in the case of building without unreinforced masonry in fields the time natural period is somewhat high and building with unreinforced masonry in field the natural period is somewhat low now what basically is the effect of unreinforced masonry in field wall in rcc frames so the space between beams and columns of the building are sometimes filled with unreinforced masonry in field so these infills also participate in the lateral response of the building so these infill participate in the lateral response of the building and as a consequence the lateral stiffness the natural period of the building are also affected in the presence of unreinforced masonry after that we have to study about this cross section properties in this tutorial we will sometimes decrease the 
moment of inertia of gross moment of inertia of the sections basically what is this reduction why do we reduce it basically what happens is that there are two type of properties in the seismic design one is the gross cross section property and one is th second is the cracked cross section property under the case of cracked section property what happens is that effective properties represent reduced stiffness of members in the damaged state when section undergo extensive cracking during the earthquake shaking as we all know that concrete and reinforced concrete is basically an elastic material so when the earthquake strikes and these reversal of stresses occurs on the rcc frame so cracks may develop on the surface of the frames beams and columns so when these cracks will develop these new cross section properties are called cracked section properties so by extensive study American code recommends these values that is for rectangular beams it is 0.4 ig for TNL beam it is 0.35 ig and for columns it is basically 0 0.8 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 so we can use these these properties or these cross section properties for the reduced cross section members these values are different for euro codes for different for indian codes reduced cross section properties has to be considered very carefully and in the gross cross section properties it is considered that the sections does not crack and they are used for estimating force and deformation demands and members subjected to gravity loading based on the linear analysis only. So here you can see that the cracked stiffness is showing the larger natural period because if the cracked section under the case of cracked section stiffness decreases and if stiffness decreases the time period increases. So until now we have learned that the natural period of the building depends on the distribution of mass and stiffness. The natural period of the building reduced with the increase in stiffness. The natural period of the building increases with increase in mass. Taller buildings have larger fundamental translation natural periods. Building tend to oscillate in the direction in which they are most flexible and have larger translation natural period. And natural period of the building depends on amount and extent of the special distribution of unreinforced mass.